yes guys it's lekker tv and we're back <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little while because i've been doing some vids by myself but not gonna lie i fully miss chatting to people and today we've got special angel amelia clarkson who is an up-and-coming actress who's featured in jane eyre <laughs> bold arc and the last kingdom which is going off on netflix right now and also a new exciting show coming up which is coming out when no idea <laughs> <laughs> familiar with another show that's coming out very soon and that's also going to be really special but before i start please subscribe below because we love the lekker content and if you want more just click the subscribe button and it's all cool so Millie, I wanted to get you for a while because obviously we know each other and you're a legend. Thanks, Benny. I wish we could be doing this in person, getting kicked. I know, I know. But you know what? I'm used to doing it. Over yeah. Zoom, in person, it's all really the same to me now. <laughs> if we did it in person, though, we would have a couple of drinks, I think. If it was oh, like that. <laughs> we'd probably feel um, it a little bit worse. We'd probably yeah. not know what we were saying. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, Millie, tell me what's going on with you at the moment a bit of the recent stuff you've been in and how you're feeling about it and everything yeah i'm feeling good i mean um definitely feeling lucky considering like the industry that i work in was harshly hit in the unprecedented pandemic um, unprecedented but, times never want to hear that again in my life oh my days i was thinking about it though like just it, the 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 idea of being around like hundreds of people on a film set but all just wearing these little masks. I was like, really, how is this safe? But it was, we were staying tested and, and everything was kosher. <laughs> um, <laughs> Very applicable right there, saying kosher. <laughs> that was for you. Yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah, so I just finished filming a new series and it went really well. We had to stop a few times for COVID. Uh, it was based in Manchester, which was great because I got to live there and spend some time with your nana, which yeah, was love that, love my that. life. You're obviously an actor. How did it all uh, yeah. How did it all start? I want the very first memory, who your inspirations were, um why you want to do it. I want the lowdown. I want it in good detail. Let's go. Okay, um so I started at a very, very young age. I was just like a huge attention seeker, um, middle child syndrome. Yeah. Um, I wanted to perform. I remember my parents took me for like my 10th birthday, maybe to see Mary Poppins at the West on the West End. And I absolutely hated it. Oh, no I, way. <laughs> what are you going to say? You loved it. <laughs> hated it. I couldn't stand that I was like sat there in the dark with all these people while there were kids on stage dancing and singing and I was like the hell am I not doing that for? Mm. Um, so like the brat that I was I was like to my parents afterwards I was like I want to be doing that I want to be on the stage not watching it um, <laughs> and then my parents <laughs> told me what an audition was and I was like well get me an audition then. <laughs> 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 that's what inspired you that mary poppins show not because you yeah, loved not because it. i loved it because i just hate it. <laughs> it's because you were on the stage and you want you no. wanted to be on the stage yeah i was jealous I, well <laughs> i think that's a good reason you know i've never heard of anything like that because if i ever speak to anyone in acting though it's like yeah i grew up watching this person or that person and i thought they were amazing yeah i grew up hating so, like, I don't want it to be like them and you just wanted to actually replace them instead. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> and what is the favourite role you've played so far? Because I know you've been in a couple cool things. I know you've got a couple more to come. Uh, who knows what the future holds. But as of now, what's been your favourite role? I have to say my last job. Just uh, because it actually, for the first time, wasn't set in like any kind of era that I have not existed in. Like normally I do period dramas, um, which are great and fun and the costumes are amazing, but there is always some like slight, especially for a woman, there's some slight restriction on on your on your role and your yeah. power and therefore yeah. your authority in a scene and stuff like that. So I think playing a girl, 
a young girl in t- today's era was probably my most liberating acting experience so far. In, you know, a drama set in a certain time or age, way back, way back in the day, because of the times, there's always going to be this certain prejudice, isn't there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Millie, so with Lekker TV, I did start it because I still know a lot of people that are working in industries that they don't want to be in or they're in shitty jobs and I was calling the mum complaining saying why am I working here but they don't actually do anything about it so I'll speak to cool people like you legends only uh, and get some advice about tough industries and how you can break into it acting is like notoriously maybe the toughest industry in the world because there's so many people that want to do it and <laughs> there's only one spot of each role in each show you know what I mean so it's tough so what do you think is the best route into acting is it drama school is it is there any other way you know recording like self demo tapes or or what getting an agent I want to hear it from you yeah I, I do think drama school if, if, if you get into drama school and you are privileged enough to be able to afford to go and like I think that is a great start for an actor i think there are lots of opportunities but it's not the be all and end all especially now like um like a few years ago um i had friends that went to identity that started up and what's what's identity identity is um like a uh as like a theater school essentially but older and it has like uh classes and it's got like so many well-known people that have been there um like uh, Daniel Kaluuya, Letitia Wright. Um, it's, you know, birthed some very, very successful actors of our generation. Um, and then there's stuff like NYT Rep or a National Youth Theatre. Yeah. Um, the Lyric, like all these places that, you know, it's just, it's just about auditioning. And again, like any competitive industry, it's like what you knock on a hundred doors and a one opens and yeah, then of course. you go from there. I know, which a lot of us are trying to do, or have done. <laughs> this one we spoke about before, quite recently. So in terms of a dream role, like probably a lead and something that really resonates with you, that you think is going to do really yeah. well, um, how long can it take to land a dream role? I don't know, I'm still trying. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wanted your opinion because I've seen people that have broken through a lot later, you know, in their 40s and they've become like these megastars or... Uh, yeah, yeah, right, like Olivia yeah. Coleman and stuff. Exactly. Um, or or people um, that have been child stars and peaked really early and then fell off in their careers or um, yeah. it affected them negatively. So um, how long do you think it will take for someone like you to land the dream role? Hard what? question, I know. <laughs> knows I mean, do you know any writers um, no i think well i think that's actually something nowadays which actors are pushed more to explore than ever is if you've got such a like an idea of your mind of it, like the dream role and the dream person and their story then like write it you know um and i think a lot i think a lot of people are starting to do that but for me I mean, I've tried writing so many times. I get so frustrated with myself. Oh, really? I've tried writing. Yeah, yeah, I've written a few things, but I just I get so frustrated with myself that I just end up it, it, it negatively impacts me because I I just start beating myself up about it. Mm. Um, but you know, one day, hopefully, hopefully <laughs> hey, that was a terrible question. That was such a mean question. <laughs> but I have to, I have to ask them. It more. was like, it was like, how long is a piece of string? And yeah, I, was like, I know. Well, like, <laughs> string is, you know, this long, this yeah. long, and yeah, as long yeah. as you want. <laughs> Millie, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. <laughs> as an outsider, anyway, I think you probably believe it on the inside, but oh, not like- outside, or you might be a bit nervous about saying it because. Like, you can't really call it, can you? But I've got the most faith in you. Thank you, and you. And then hopefully there'll, there'll be a sofa and a camera and we can have this conversation. I know, and then we can talk about, we can literally talk about this, hopefully in five, 10 years time. <laughs> Champagne. Yeah, imagine, that would be amazing. So fingers fucking crossed. <laughs> um, and 
another pretty good question for the last one, if I say so myself. Uh, have there ever been moments when you wanted to give up on acting and you're like, fuck this, it's not for me. Like, why did I get into it so young? Uh, I'm done with this. So can you tell me a bit about them, please? Yeah, I definitely had, yeah, I had that moment. I went like, between like, when I was 18, I'd just done like a pilot episode for something for Amazon, mm. um, where I was like a big part in it. And then it never got picked up for series. So we, we never went ahead with it. And then I think I went like, seven months maybe more without work and I was just working at a local hotel doing like silver service at like weddings and stuff um which you know looking back on that stuff is such a rite of passage and all the like That's and I still right. do pick up you know regular bar work and stuff which I love but um I think the, it was seven months was a long time and I realized as well, like I didn't have any GCSEs, well, no, I had GCSEs, but I didn't have any A-levels. Um, I wasn't doing a degree, all my friends were doing degrees and I just felt like, yeah, just a bit like, God, I've got nothing to fall back on here. I think I think especially when, when people in our age group start going to uni, that definitely would have been one of the times when you're like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> like everyone's gone off to uni, they're meeting all these people. So that's yeah. probably really hard time, so. It was hard. I mean, I yeah. stopped, I kind of, my best mate who went to Birmingham, I kind of just went and stayed there whenever I could and just like soaked up as much as the university yeah. experiences was possible. But, um, and I enrolled on like various like Spanish course, yeah. <laughs> like online. The, the insurance, the insurance options. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I love that, I love that. That's everything that I wanted to ask you. I've got to say again, I've got the most faith in you because I think, oh, really? I think you are, honestly. I've got so much faith. You're on the right path and I've met you personally and I've seen some of your work. I literally just watched your show reel before, which I hadn't seen. I could see you oh. in a bit because I went on your agent page and I fucking loved it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and thank obviously you. we'll go out with Nana soon. He's also yes, um, <laughs> So keep an eye out for Millie, who's gonna do Unreal Bits. And if you want more videos from Lekker TV, you like, comment, and you fucking subscribe. Yes, we do.